It is two months since the killing of George Floyd, the African-American who died while being detained by police in Minneapolis. His death sparked protests around the world. Now, in the US, there have been growing calls for a more honest look at how the legacy of slavery influences American society to this day. And the latest in our series of reports on colonial legacies comes from Virginia, where our correspondent Ali Makbul considers the role that Britain played in the shaping of modern America. It was here on the coast of Virginia that an English ship brought against their will the first 20 Africans to what was already a British colony. And so began the horrific legacy of slavery here, from which more than 400 years on, some of the greatest ills in American society can be traced. There are those who feel some people in Britain looked at Americans with contempt during the recent race troubles, but need to acknowledge their own role. Britain put its stamp on America from the beginning. If you claim that America has its foundational culture based on England, then you've got to take it all. And that includes slavery. That includes the systemic racism in our laws, in our practices, and in our culture. Why is your knee on her neck? Policing in the southern United States traces its origins to slave patrols set up under the British, who also passed laws which regarded black people as inferior. The policing that we see that automatically assumes that a black person is a criminal. That starts from really uh, the founding of our country that viewed Africans as systemically different as people. But Americans, of course, have to shoulder responsibility too. They won independence, but then there was civil war, with the Confederate South fighting to keep slavery. Many British elites backed the South, but their side lost and slavery was banned. Decades later, statues to Confederate leaders were put up here to rewrite history and remind black people of their place. We were told, don't look up at them. We were told, keep walking straight, keep driving straight. You don't have to look up to that white man. They made it that big so that you would have to hurt your neck to look up to them. And we're done with that. And in fact, we're now going to create a space that's just comfortable for us to be, be around. Statues in the former Confederate capital of Richmond have now been daubed with graffiti or torn down, including one of former Confederate President Jefferson Davis, who died utterly unrepentant about his role in fighting his own country over slavery. But some of his descendants say we need to look past that detail. None of the individuals that are being attacked today were solely slave perpetuations. They had an illustrious history that is associated with many more acts that may preclude that scenario of slavery. Britain may have brought slavery here, but it's some Americans still commemorating its legacy. Remarkably, there are 11 Confederate statues that still stand in the US Capitol building. The question is, what message does it send to African Americans when some people whose fame, notoriety is derived from the fact that they defended, even fought to keep the institution of slavery, are celebrated here in the most exalted corridors of American power? There are now moves to take away these statues. But progress towards a more complete representation of America's past is slow. The Museum of African American History close by is one of few national institutions that tackles the horrors of slavery head on. Across the South in particular, even in schools, there's reluctance to do that. But for many, tolerance is wearing thin, not just for this sidestepping of uncomfortable history, but also the slow pace of change in modern America to make it a more just society. Aline McBool, BBC News in Virginia.